Good morning. On this beautiful spring morning, the fifth Sunday of Easter tide, we begin our worship standing and singing hymn number 603. by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings.
first reading is from Acts. Now the apostles and the believers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, Why did you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain it to them step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheep coming down from heaven, being lowered by its four corners, and it came close to me. As I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, By no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time, the voice answered from heaven, what God has made clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times. Then everything was pulled up again to heaven. At that very moment, three men, sent to me from Caesarea, arrived at the house where we were. The Spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen the angel standing in his house and saying, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and your entire household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, just as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was, who was I that I could hinder God? When they heard this, they were silenced. And they praised God, saying, Then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read this song in your insert together. <coughs> Alleluia. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights. Praise Him, all you angels of His. Praise Him, all His hosts. Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, all you shining stars. Passed away, 
and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples. And God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. This morning we have a very special treat, my friends. Let me just give you a little background and we're going to actually welcome Mr. John Ager with the gospel hymn we're going to sing. Um, I'm holding in my hands a book that Mr. John Ager has authored, We Plow God's Fields. This book was autographed by him, thank you sir, and will reside in our parish library, but listen to his inscription. We plow the fields and scatter the good seed on the land, but it is fed and watered by God's almighty hand. You'll be glad to know that our gospel hymn is that very text. Um, as you all know, and some of you may not know, because I know we always have visitors, so a special welcome to you all this morning. Um, Dixon, my husband, and I have been here about six months, and one of the great pleasures and treats has been getting to know all the folks toward Lake Lure and Rumbling Bald and Yonder Way, and then all the folks toward Bat Cave, Girton, and Hickory Nut. And part of that great gift is to come familiar with the story of Cheryl's Inn, which is about seven miles Yonder Way. Everybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> Among his other claims to fame, of which he has many, he resides there with his lovely wife, Annie who's a direct descendant of the McClure's who in 1916, was it? Traveled in their Hudson automobile from Chicago on their honeymoon, ending up, and I want to read you a piece from, the, from his book. This is written by Mr. Egger, and it's about Elizabeth and uh, Jim McClure. Their plan was to find a small country place to rent. so that they could take time to find a farm to buy. They kept looking, but saw no place that suited, and one day they were driving along the old turnpike road that led from Asheville through the little town of Fairview and across a valley toward the mountains. They began the ascent of the Hickory Nut Gap, historically one of the most important passages and most important passageways across the Blue Ridge. As the Hudson's gears groaned under the strain of the steep and rough road, Elizabeth and Jim looked up to see a large weather-beaten house nestled under the mountains at the top of a long sloping pasture. Slowing the car, Elizabeth and Jim both gasped. That's the place for us. The old inn in its unique situation, appeal to their sense of drama and history. But of course, they had to have a closer look, and who could say that the inhabitants had any notion of selling? <laughs> so the rest, as we say, is history. <laughs> but Cheryl's in Hickory Nut Gap, the Gorge, and all of you that, as you know, that's part of who we are. This is our parish, our neighborhood. So let us stand and give thanks to God and sing hymn number 291, we plow the fields and scatter. <laughs>
Glory to you, Lord Christ. At the Last Supper, when Judas had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. inviting me to do this. It's, I've been thinking this morning that it's already been a blessing for me, so if there's a little bit of blessing for you all, all the better. Um, and thank you for that wonderful introduction. Um, one of the great things about being asked to do something like this, I don't often get asked to do it, and I should mention that it's very risky of Anne to let somebody <laughs> up here. You never know what they're going to say. <laughs> Um, is that it gets me back into the into the Word and the Scriptures, and uh, I have had a lifelong love of <coughs> studying the Scriptures, and uh, and it's been one of the joys of my life. So I, I, uh, Will and Maddie and I were all up in the in the wet Jackson County shack we have up in uh, Little Canada. I don't know if anybody knows where that is. Uh, yesterday, and I was I. It was a, we had a work weekend with our family up there, um, and it was kind of nice for me to be able to sneak away and work on this uh, and not have to haul wood like everybody else was doing. <laughs> uh, it was a wonderful event with sort of a tons of grandchildren and dogs and great food. So there's a blessing right there. Um, the service that we have gone through already has really explained the sermon already. I'm just going to be repeating all the themes. That opening hymn was beautiful, and 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 uh, really the, the whole service. Even though we plow God's field, hymn that was just a wonderful expression of of what this what this passage is about. And the, I should say what the passage is that I'm going to talk about, which is the Acts passage, um, Acts 11. Uh, the, the, the vision of the food uh, of God bringing the sheet of animals down, which is kind of an extraordinary thing to think about. There's a little bit of irony in, in me being here, uh, and it was explained that my wife's grandparents, the McClures, bought that place. Jim McClure was a, a Presbyterian mm -hmm. minister, as was his father, uh, and they were Presbyterians all the way back to a group called the Covenanters, uh, and the, we have a we have a picture in in the house down there uh, of uh, a whole crowd of Scotsmen, their wives, their children, and their dogs, uh, <laughs> all in great anguish, uh, and they were they were letting God know. That under, they were making covenant with God that under no circumstances would they bow down to the Book of Common Prayer. <laughs> <laughs> they ended up, uh, you know, the Presbyterians ended up kind of taking over Scotland for a, a, a long period of time. We Presbyterians like to think that it was a it was the golden age of Scotland, but maybe we're prejudiced. <laughs> but. Um, so I've come 
come to terms with the Book of Common Prayer and, and much appreciate it. And uh, when I'm traveling, I often will go to a Episcopal church just because one of the things I love about it is the scripture readings and how em much emphasis put on scripture. Uh, so here we go. Um, I should say that my my Agar ancestor uh, immigrated to America in 1630 as part of all this religious turmoil uh, in, in England in England and Scotland of that day. And I guess we could say that the, the whole wrangling after politics, power, and religion uh, continues on today. So the, the title of my sermon is even the Gentiles. That would be mostly us, I think. <laughs> so here we are in this beautiful church in sort of deepest, steepest Appalachia, uh, thinking about the time when God reached out to even the Gentiles. This passage is the beginning the beginning moment in which the gospel was extended beyond the Jewish people to us, I'm assuming most of us, uh, as the Gentiles. We, we get the first picture of it at Pentecost, um, which is one of my favorite, favorite little passages. Um, and I, I think... I think you can, from this passage and really from most of Acts, you feel the energy, the energy of the Holy Spirit and the excitement of, of Peter. You know, Peter was the big loser not too much before all this, uh, a, a troubled man. Suddenly he's empowered by the Holy Spirit and we feel this, this uh, just tremendous energy and, and, and excitement and sense of success as the gospel of Jesus Christ begins to spread. Um, so but this is the, my little quote about the Pentecost. Uh, then, how, then how is it that each of us hears them in their native language? There was this sort of crazy speaking uh, in, in other languages and everyone understanding and, uh, all these different nationalities and ethnic groups, Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus in Asia and Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? And I love this about the Bible. Some, however, made fun of them and said they have had too much wine. <laughs> <laughs> so going through the, the, Acts, uh, the Acts 11 passage, it, it is really a repeat of the story in Acts 10. Uh, and it has to do with Cornelius, who was a centurion uh, who lived in Caesarea, named after Caesar, of course. Uh, and Caesarea was a big military town, uh, maybe sort of like Fayetteville, I don't know. But um, they, uh, he, he, you know, he was a prominent man, a, a, an officer over 100 men. That's what centurion means, I think. And he was... A man seeking after God uh, and and trying to align his life in a way that pleased God, um, and so uh, that's that's how the story begins. And um, Peter Peter was in the town of Joppa, and I I think some of us might remember that Joppa there was a another famous biblical figure who went to Joppa to get away from God's will. Uh, and he ended up in the belly of a big fish. Um, in, in this case, P 
Peter was in Joppa praying and staying with a friend, Simon the Tanner, uh, and he 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 had this vision, um, and that the vision we we've heard this morning, um, and it, the, the the vision had to do with the dietary laws of the Jewish people. Um, we all we you know we we. We all like to define ourselves, and one of the ways we define ourselves is with our diets. I mean, it's still our modern world. Uh, I, whenever you go to someone's house now, they, they have to ask what foods you can and can't eat. Uh, they're ve vegans and paleos, and um, I, I, I'm, I'm sort of a, I'll eat what they put in front of me. Kind of um, so, so, but, but for the Jewish people, the dietary law was a large degree who they were, how they identified themselves to the world. Uh, we, you know, we still have kosher eating rules today uh, in, in, in amongst our Jewish friends. Uh, and the Islamic people have their own dietary rules. And I might tell you a story. Um, uh, Will and I helped uh, a, a family from Kosovo settled here in Fairview, uh, Hanifa, and she, she does our gardening now. She's a wonderful character. Um, and they're, they're Islamic, uh, and they came here, and she's kind of a rebel herself, and her husband, Ragi, she was making his lunch every day, and she slipped in a ham sandwich. Oh. <laughs> and he got all mad, and she said, Ragi, we're in America now. <laughs> Anyway, we still are dealing with these things and how we identify with our, our different kinds of diets. Um, so, so Peter is praying in Joppa, and he's he it, it becomes well known amongst well, who they label here as circumcised believers. Um, you know, that's always one of the weirdest things about the Bible is the whole circumcision thing, but we won't worry about that. This is another problem that had to be overcome by the early church. Uh, would would, would uh, Gentiles be required to be circumcised in order to become uh, Christians? So anyway, um, there, they, there they were. He was, and, and, and Peter was criticized because uh, because we, we uh, Cornelius himself had a vision uh, that there was a man in Joppa staying with Simon who was going to kind of explain to him uh, how, to, how to approach God, how to, how to receive the gospel, I guess we would put it. And he had that vision. So Cornelius sent three of his trusted people down to find Peter, Simon Peter. And they found him in the house of of the Peter guy, and Peter had no clue. They just showed up, and uh, and Caesarea was about a thirty-mile walk. So they took him a day. They get back to Caesarea, uh, and one of the questions that Peter had to deal with was, and this, you know, this is sort of incredible for us to think about. The question was, should I go inside his house? Mm -hmm. Jewish people were not allowed to go in the house of unclean Gentiles. It was a it was a not a small problem, uh, and but Peter felt like he had he had the uh, you know the, the Holy Spirit had given him the right to do that, the reason to do that, uh, and he did it. And so the, the the passage in chapter eleven begins with him being criticized for doing that, um, and Peter had to go to Jerusalem, which was the center of early Christianity to, to answer for this. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the, the circumcised <coughs> believers criticized him and said, you went into the house of uncircumcised men and ate with them. Ate with them. Unclean food. Um, and Peter began and explained everything to them. Uh, and I, I love uh, when he's having that vision of the all the animals coming down and, you know, must have been a pig in there somewhere. And, uh, and, and God said, get up, Peter, kill and eat. 
we farmers get that. <laughs> and he replied, surely not, Lord. Nothing impure or unclean has ever entered my mouth. Uh, and, and, and you sort of get a taste for the Jewish way of thinking that, you know, it's all an effort to remain pure before the Lord. Um, and and uh, anyway, um, it, 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 I think in Jesus' eyes, it was the Pharisee approach. We have laws. We keep every little law. Uh, and then we're pure and usually kind of self-righteous about it. Um, and then it goes on, and, and, and uh, Peter hears the voice of God saying, Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. Uh, it happens three times for emphasis. Um, and then, uh, he, you know, he, he, he begins to talk to the, 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 the uh, Cornelius. And, and apparently when they arrived there at Cornelius' house, it was full of people. People were fascinated. What's going on? Maybe people had heard stories about this, this, this new approach to understanding God. Um, and so uh, we move on here um, and we, we begin to realize that taboos are being broken left and right. I might remind you how easy it is for a church congregation to get upset about just about anything. You know, uh, the change of music, uh, you know, it used to be like, do you have drums in music? Sometimes people didn't like that. But how easy it is, because so much of church life is ritual, and, um, and we, you know, we, we, we were so comfortable in our rituals. This, this is what was going on in that little, that, in Cornelius' house in Caesarea was revolutionary. Uh, and the Jewish taboos were being broken left and right. And it was all being sort of understood as the Holy Spirit pouring through uh, in order to spread the good news to the, to the Gentiles. So... Uh, so what, 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 what Peter heard was, God has shown me that I should not call any man, hopefully that means any person, impure or unclean. That was the message he was getting. It's revolutionary. Um, so circumcision, dietary laws, self-righteous, Prejudice against other people that are others, uh, Gentiles, unthinkable, unthinkable uh, transformation uh, of the, the practice of Judaism. Um, and the way this end, ended up at the, at the end of at the end of the tenth chapter, which is where this story takes place, is is a, is a wonderful section. We didn't read that, so I'm going to go ahead and read it. While Peter was speaking, still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers, uh, Peter had wisely brought six of his circumcised Jewish Christians with him to sort of witness what this was going on. So the, the, the circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Uh, uh, very much like the Pentecost experience. Then Peter said, Can anyone keep these people from being baptized with water? They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. Uh, it's a wonderful story, and it, it's the beginning of, of, of the church being a universal church, not just a church 
of, of the Jewish people. So, um, the revelation began in the house of Cornelius and has now even reached Bat Cave. Praise the Lord. Uh, the, the, the simple message that Jesus taught was to repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. Um, and I think we, you know, in some ways we think that word repent is, is a difficult, uh, is difficult and, and uh, something that we might resist. But as a Presbyterian, I will say that repenting is to understand the depth of our depravity. And that sounds pretty harsh too. But once you kind of understand how poorly each of us measures up to the pure righteousness of our Lord uh, and Lord God, and and we, um, it, it's, there's a relief there because we no longer have to do all the striving to become kind of perfect uh, in his eyes, because that's impossible. So we repent and we, we, we spend a lot of our lives looking at the parts of our lives that are so imperfect and that, that are dysfunctional in lots of ways. And, and if we can truly get to the point of accepting uh, God's love, uh, we can begin to make progress on some of those areas. We, we, won't, we will never be perfectly successful. That's just not who we are as people. But God loves us anyway. And that was a wonderful line in one of the hymns we sang. Um, we are relieved in a way of that guilt. Uh, we feel the love pouring out from heaven that is now so close at hand. His love of us is what transforms us, not our pitiful striving. So, it's not what we eat. It's not being a slave to the law, as Paul pointed out. Like the Pharisees, we have the freedom to fail. It's not despising your neighbor who is different. It's not even slaughtering lambs at the temple anymore. All of that's changed. All of the the heart of, of, of Jewish religious practices was uh, swept away by the Holy Spirit at this early, early moment. So uh, verse 18, the last verse of this passage, it says, So then God has granted even the Gentiles repentance unto life. Praise the Lord. stand and reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed on page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
has spoken through the prophets. We, we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. May the peace of the risen Lord be always with you. And also with you. How are you? I'm gone. Sorry for the same thing. I went to the church with another small and I left. There was a doll there too. And so when we called each other, I'm like, I'm going to go. Christmas carols last night. Good. Welcome again, everybody. Thank you all for joining us this morning for worship, especially if you're visiting today. We have refreshments. I saw the stewardess down that hallway, or you may go out through the doors you entered and through the beautiful garden and enjoy the blooming flowers and then into the parish hall. We have coffee and refreshments. John Hager, you may be my very favorite, favorite, Presby Palian. <laughs> Thank you, sir. We are blessed by your presence with us in your message this morning. Thank you very much. Um, he has a bumper sticker on his car that says, Friend, Neighbor, Farmer. And that's who you are, so thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, a couple of quick announcements. Mary Lee, who's been, as you know, spearheading the wonderful boat tour, cruise tour. Do you want to give us a few reminders of things? Sure. Um, most of all, we need prayers for sunshine for <laughs> Thursday. Um, I have a, a listing of the, the roster of each boat, and uh, Danny and Alice will be passing them out to those who are going on the cruise this Thursday. You're going to be meeting at the docks at 2 o'clock. Um, the they will give you has all the information on it. Uh, if we have bad weather, then we'll let you know ahead of time, but hopefully that won't be the case. But we're looking forward to a great day, a great tradition, uh, and it should be great fun. So if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you, Mary Lee. Somebody asked me about weather, and I said, you know what? I'm in sales, not management, but I'm afraid for the weather. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I have an announcement from over 100 years ago. Would you stand and share it with me? Yes. I wanted to share that Mother Eva Matthews was a Presbyterian, and her family <laughs> were Presbyterians before they became Anglican. God be praised. Yes. <laughs> one other thing, uh, Mother Eva Mary stayed at the Sherilyn in 1897. Oh, exactly. So I thought that was a lovely yeah. circle, full circle. Yes. <laughs> and for those of you who are visiting with us, well, share who Mother Eva was, because we always have folks who don't know who Mother Eva was. Yeah, she uh, and Mother um, Sister Beatrice began the community of the Transfiguration, which was begun then, and actually they came to Bat Cave, stayed at the Esmeralda Inn, and needed a place of retreat. 
and they were told they could rent an old farmhouse for $25 a year. And that's where I live now, it's on the place of the original. But the convent is in Cincinnati, the mother house. And the sisters come here for a retreat and renewal. So, so the Church of the Transfiguration <laughs> is here and will give God the most of credit, but no small number to the sisters of the Transfiguration. Um, also, we have the men's grill and chill coming up. Where's my senior warden? Right here. Give me the talk up there, sir. <laughs> Mr. Tom? May 24th, 5 o'clock to 7 o'clock, behind the rectory, we're going to have a grill and chill, or chill and grill, whichever way you want to make it. Uh, sides will be provided. Uh, I believe we have, I know you, you've got banana pudding coming. Yeah, yeah. I know that. Scalp potatoes, potatoes and baked yeah. beans will be provided. Refreshments will be provided. All you've got to do is bring the protein. Uh, whatever <laughs> protein you want cooked on the grill, we'll cook it on the grill. And uh, again, five to seven on the 24th, and we look forward to the men of the Transfiguration getting together for some great fellowship. And all I need to do is email me at triton, T-R-Y-T-I-N, 03AOL.com. Confirm that you're coming so that we know what, uh, how many grills we're going to need. So we can get a banana pudding. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this is for those of us of the male persuasion. It doesn't matter whether we're circumcised or uncircumcised. Let us walk in love as Christ first loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God. <laughs>
for you alone are God, living in true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave destroyed death, and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, 
sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember all those on our parish prayer list, and especially the people of Ukraine. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ, and those whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them into the place of eternal joy and light. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on our earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are God's holy gifts for God's holy people.
eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us His children through the resurrection of His Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of His blessing. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen.